So if you're a knife collector or a knife enthusiast, uh, you've probably seen some integral knives like this Lion Steel SR11. Uh, integral meaning that it the, the handle of the knife is made out of one piece, in this case of aluminum, that's been milled out instead of two flat pieces joined together. Um, in this case, we've got the whole handle, the uh, the back spacer area, and then the lock itself are also milled from the same piece of aluminum. But, you know, the knife it consists of several other pieces in the assembly. We've got quite a few things screwed on here. Um, and you know that this is considered a very modern design, uh, you know, sort of uh, showing off what we can do with modern machining, um, and that these knives come at a premium, especially if they're made out of something harder than aluminum. Um, well, A.G. Russell came out with this design in 1987, and it is integral. It's one piece of steel for the handle that also forms the lock and the spring. Um, so originally these were made in Japan in the 80s and 90s. And then in 2008, they started making them in the US and they offered some upgraded steels they had uh, for the blade. They had CPM 154 as one option and ZDP 189 as the other option, which is a pretty exotic, very hard steel from Hitachi. Um, they only made them in the US briefly and then they made them in Italy briefly and now they've been discontinued. This is one of the Italian ones made of N690 steel from Bowler. Um, and this thing is really an impressive feat of engineering. If you want one, you'll have to find one on the secondary market because they have been discontinued, but they are available. If, uh, so if you're interested in this knife, you can look on eBay and, you know, go to knife shows and things like that, and you probably find one without too much difficulty. Um, so it's spring steel in the handle, uh, which allows for springiness. <laughs> so that we can have the, the, the hammer lock, right? Uh, this back lock. Um, the size of the thane is really impressive as well. I mean, it's thinner than a Kershaw leak, right? Uh, I mean, the, the, the whole thing at the widest part is thinner than a Kershaw leak. Um, the amount of blade relative to handle is pretty impressive. I mean, it's got more blade than this Spyderco Delica, more sharpened edge and more overall reach than this Delica. Um, and the handle's a little bit shorter. It's, um, I believe, three and seven eighths inch closed, and you get three and one eighth inch of a blade. Um, Closed, it kind of falls in between the size of a um, Benchmade bug out and a mini bug out. But opened, it has a blade that's also in between them, but it's probably a little closer to the bug out, the full size bug out in terms of utility. Um, Yeah, it's just a really impressive little knife, and one that I think is deserving of a little more attention uh, yeah, among the knife community. I mean, it's not that it was um, unpopular. It was the second best-selling model from A.G. Russell in the time that it was out. But uh, it's not one that I see a lot anymore, and um, I think 
you know, it's it's competitive with some of the much newer knives um, in terms of you know its its ratios and um, its design. It's a really neat little knife. I just wanted to share it with y'all. All right, thanks.